Some will never have an experience beyond the 3D. Others will. Once you know, you can't unknow, especially when you've seen it. When you level up, the dark ones reveal themselves. The game gets real real, real fast. Once the veil falls, all that remains is the path to the truth. Nothing will ever be the same again. And you have a choice. Go back to the comforting illusions and materialism or level up right now. You are player one. So stay tuned for this gruesome affair. Blitz of the Shadow Flyers. This is the extraordinary secret. Finding yourself in the talons of an owl in the shadows of the forest moonlight. It's a gruesome it's affair. A gruesome affair. affair. Things got kind of crazy in the astral leading up to two weeks to flatten the curve. This is in the months leading up to March 2020, when the world would be locked down. Locked down is a term used when all doors are locked and the prisoners are confined to their rooms. Calling it lockdown is very accurate, and the dark forces were eager in anticipation to see their plans in action. The spiritual war has been going on forever, but the launch of the COVID campaign would take it to a new level for humanity and the others. There are different stages of awakening, so I can't say I am all-knowing. I can say that I am further on the journey now than I was then. So you may be behind or ahead of me. Either way, we can share knowledge, experiences, and enjoy some company in this theater of experience called Earth Realm. As December 2019 started, I could start to feel the physical symptoms of the tension. I was a conspiracy theorist to the core then, but I had yet to start my journey into the other realms. Sure, I knew it was there. I just didn't dare open that Pandora box. I had a corporate job, paid my taxes, and life was good enough. Little did I know then that the other realm is as real or more real than this seemingly visible, tangible world, the 3D dimension. Materialism is an illusion. Time is also an illusion. I survived the Blitz, the Blitz of the Shadow Flyers. On December 9th, 2019, it seemed like the world around me flipped inside out, the Dark Ones launched their attack. I could hear the buzzing in my head. I felt like I was in the Truman Show. I had listened to a person who is in the know, and he was alluding to that airports would soon close and travel would be restricted on the basis of an alleged planetary medical emergency. A new level of tyranny was unfolding under the guise of a theatrically planned emergency. One podcast recommended finding an intentional community. A Stockholm-based hedge fund manager tweeted that the world would never be the same starting March 2020. He tweeted this in fall 2019, while certain foundations were having a meeting in New York about preparing for the next global medical emergency, and each participant received a free Corona plush doll like a teddy bear. The masses would soon learn this new vocabulary, but would receive no free plush doll. He said many with financial debt would be wiped out from the event. I knew something big was up, but the enemy doesn't reveal their playbook, except with some cryptic predictive programming to soften their karma recoil. I came home from work and picked up a book it was called Global Brain by Howard Bloom. I opened to a page, a paragraph, and then the words blurred and reappeared again with new text bearing secrets about the world, about evil in high places, and about our predicament. The words were changing and refreshing right before my eyes, but this was a used paper book I had ordered on Amazon the words are not supposed to scramble and change in front of my eyes on printed, yellowed, old paper. I don't dare repeat those words, except from my lips, 
to a living ear, watching printed words on a paper book disappear and reappear was shocking. And of course, I was simply in awe of this spectacle and read them all for the course of the phenomena. I remember seeing a photo of a burned truck being hauled off from the fires in Paradise, California. The cleanup crew had spray painted on the destroyed carcass of the vehicle. Zombie Nation. It hit me. That's what they think of the masses. Zombies. Zombie Nation. Media controlled zombies. And they have good reason to mock the masses for that. Those that take the easy route and comply to every ridiculous thing do not earn the respect of their masters. No. Behind closed doors, they are mocked and ridiculed. This is the sad fact for the ones that think they can comply their way to freedom. They think if they just lick that black leather boot enough, they'll receive some mercy. Maybe it was a bad idea, but I packed my bag and decided to make a run for it. First, I wanted to see an old girlfriend. She was one of the few people that I trusted with my heart, at least at that time. It was a rainy night, and I get around on bicycle. So I unlocked my bike and set out to go. Funny thing is my backpack had some practical supplies, but mostly books. Yeah, it's my personal apocalypse, and the main thing I take with me are books. Global Brain, Cruel Hoax, Alice in Wonderland, a King James Version Bible. Yeah, I'm going to need these books when I get to heaven. As I biked in the drizzly cold darkness of the late night, I saw them all around me, the shadow flyers. The dark shadows you see out of the corner of your eyes, they move. When you turn your head to focus on them, they vanish. But then you see another in another place out of the corner of your eye. You are surrounded. It's dreadful. You don't want to tell anyone because they will think you are crazy. Maybe you are crazy. That's the thing about psychosis. It's either you are crazy or everyone else is crazy and you are the only sane one. This is a big topic, but not for now. Maybe you are having your own personal apocalypse and the dark ones that harvest your energy, your soul and life energy are trying to prevent you from leveling up. They see you are opening your eyes, your third eye, and you are about to become absolutely unstoppable and with a glowing light emitting good heart energy. And this is something they absolutely despise. So they launch a coordinated attack. The energy forms want you scared. They feed on your conscious energy and don't want to be outsmarted. These are the shadow flyers that the ancient shamans of North America knew about. This is among the tons of ancient knowledge that we have forgotten. This is the knowledge that the network of knowers hide from the masses. Sure, we have more advanced technology now, but do we have more advanced consciousness? Sure, we have an advanced civilization, but are we more civilized? Sure, we are efficient at manufacturing, but do we manufacture better lives now? Better and more nutritious food now? better human relationships now? You know the answers. The synchronicities came. Text messages that were cryptic, and the words could be interpreted in another way to apply to exactly the dark evil spiritual blitz of the shadow flyers being launched against me in that moment. There were not many people out on that cold night, but the few that I did see seemed to shapeshift and contort in bizarre and demonic ways. Faces seemed demonic. I knew that a person that I had become close to was demonic, and they really were. God would later reveal to me the full truth about this person, their life's trauma, their true intentions, and their satanic cult mafia family. 
The person was from a hornet's nest of demons that sold their souls for material gain, and now each moment of their lives is pure agony, as they know the truth too well. Looking back, maybe it was the best idea, and maybe it was the worst idea, but my running away destination was a religious sect located in a forest a few hours from where I live. It's not a secret who the sect was. I will tell you if you wish, but not publicly. I do not want to give them a good or bad name. They are just trying to survive and practice their mostly healthy beliefs. I had met some of them while hiking in New Hampshire. They seem to have a spiritual insight that I seeked in that moment, and they seem to have ancient knowledge. And I did make it to their compound, where they grow their own food. I made it there, and for whatever reason, felt safe, and the dark spiritual attack stopped altogether. I had little with me, no toothbrush, just the clothes on my back and a backpack filled with books that I grabbed as the blitz of the shadow flyers was launched back in my home city. When I started seeing the shadow flyers, I literally just panicked and split that day. I didn't have a G-O-O-D good bag ready that stands for get out of dodge. So I just packed books and split. The books were speaking to me on the property of the religious sect the dark spiritual blitz just stopped altogether. I was able to get something I hadn't gotten for days. Rest. I slept so good in a bunk bed in an old trailer propped up in the forest. It was the first time I felt safe in days, and the blitz of the shadow flyers came to an absolute stop. I felt spiritually protected. They wanted me to join their group and said that I was able to stay for even a year as a guest if I wished. I stayed for one week. There is a whole story here, maybe a whole book, and the religious farmers had their own objectives, so looking back now, I am not sure how safe I really was, but that is where God led me on that day. I felt good with them, and they had good, nutritious food. The natural environment provided a good social setting, and I was able to discuss spiritual matters with different members for hours while working each day. I know they were a cult, but I refrain from calling them that without stating that Western society is absolutely a cult. So before any of us call a group a cult, it's key to understand that yes, it is a cult. But just because the big cult called Western society seems normal to some, it's absolutely not normal. And it is absolutely a cult run by cult leaders with, as John Lennon explained, insane people with insane ends. He tried to tell us all. And that was silenced quickly. At the religious sect, they do all their work in pairs, and they had the belief that work creates an opportunity for fellowship. It really did. I learned so much. Many conversations would result in referring to scripture, and the experience taught me where to seek wisdom. It is amazing that we can live in a world where so much content is consumed, but so little wisdom received. The group started each morning with a community meeting and sang songs, all ages with guitars and violins in a large stone and wood meeting hall. It was such a human experience, unlike anything I had experienced in my life. It was an actual community of real families. When I finally left, they packed me a meal pack for the trip and one of the members named Haravia escorted me to the train station. I will never forget the things he told me before I departed. He said, look around, look at the people. And I did. They looked indeed like zombies, some eating fast food, 
like dead, unhealthy food and staring mindlessly at their phones for some glimpse of cheap stimulation. Most people had a dead expression. I encourage you, dear listener, to really take notice to the expressions and energies of the people that are in your environment. Haravia looked at me in the eye and he said, be careful, they know you know now. I felt confident that I would be safe. Creating fear is the main weapon. If you are fearless, you are ungovernable and uncontrollable. They may give up trying to control you completely. It wouldn't be until almost two years later when I sat up during an ayahuasca ceremony and puked into a bucket and exercised the dark energy that was feeding on my soul that I could see the truth. Once you see it, you know. I was disoriented and the room was dark. The shamans were dancing and singing, but in dark tones. It was beautiful music, but dark and visceral. It was magical and almost scary, but in a beautiful way. One of the helpers was a gentleman in his 60s named Jack. He assisted me out to the kitchen to clean the bucket. It's real, he said. Magic is real, he said. The music they are playing, it's called Ikaros. Those are ancient shamanic songs, like magic songs. The Ikaros pull the dark spirits out of you. He said, you are healing. He added, I could sense this was the truth. I felt so blessed to experience it. We have a companion for life, a predator from the depths of the cosmos. He said, the kitchen was empty of the others who were in another room having their ayahuasca journeys. We could hear the Icaros playing in the other room the singing and mute drums and the different sounds. The table in the kitchen had heaps of fresh vegetables, fruit and nut butters, and fresh bread as snacks, blueberries, watermelon, peanut butter, cashew butter, and almond butters. The food was healthy here, as were the energies. This is a place of healing. These are true healers and true souls on a healing journey. Dear listener, do not be mistaken that people have to be broken in order to need to be healed. When you lift weights, your muscles need healing. This is how it is spiritually. As you gain new spiritual awareness, healing is part of the process. As you ascend and become spiritually strong, our families communities and nations desperately need spiritually strong ones during this ongoing spiritual warfare here in earth realm jack continued we are food for them sustenance in mexico they call chicken coops galineros we are reared in humaneros just like how we keep livestock to feed off they keep us to feed off at their convenience. He said, they see a newborn human baby as a glowing energy form with a coating of pure luminous energy surrounding it. This luminous energy is our essence and the shadow flyers consume it. He said, they keep us in fear with concerns and pseudo concerns. Turn off the light and you can see the flyers with your own eyes. He said, and he switched the kitchen light off. I saw them. They are literally here, scattering like dark clouds into the periphery when you become conscious of them. I saw one against the wall with the far corner of my left eye. When I moved my eye to focus on it, it was gone again. But then I see another out of the corner of my right eye. This is exactly what happened that night a few years ago, before COVID, riding my bike in the middle of the dark, cold, drizzly night, 
It was the blitz of the Shadow Flyers. They are smart and organized, methodical, Jack said. He looked at me and held up his index finger, pointing. Discipline is a deterrent, he said. Discipline makes the Shadow Flyers give up on feeding off your energy. If you don't feed the Shadow Flyers, if you keep your spiritual energy, it won't be pruned and it will grow to its full size and volume that nature intended. This is the extraordinary secret. Many will never learn it. The Shadow Flyers will not waste their time trying to feed on a human with inner silence and discipline. The moment you realize this is when the battle starts, he said. Before that, you were unaware that there is a battle, and this is what they want. Easy prey, he added. Jack moved his finger around, pointing around the room. When the Shadow Flyer's mind flees, we succeed at grabbing the vibrating force that holds the everything together, the ether, the conglomerate of the energy field, he said. The Shadow Flyers are implacable, do you understand? He said. What does implacable mean? I asked. It means you cannot gain their true goodwill. They may trick you, tell you good things, try to put you at ease, but you are their prey and they cannot and absolutely never are able to sincerely wish you well. This is impossible. Our creator is ingenious. The Shadow Flyers are your challengers. They exist to test you. They are energy probes. And as a human, you can only keep your energy if you learn how to protect it. There is duality in everything. This is the way. Do you understand? He asked. Yes, I said. And thank you for telling me, Jack. We had a laugh and I felt so light and free. The evil is still here. It always has been and always will be. The fear campaign of 2020 was a strong spiritual campaign against humanity, but it also revealed the enemy. Like in a 3D combat, when an undetected soldier takes his shot, he also reveals his position by the flash of his gunfire. In this sense, the evil enemy of the humans of Earthrealm have been revealed, and we know their position. It's up to us now to take countermeasures. Now, you may think the words exchanged over an ayahuasca puke bucket by two people in the middle of the night in a forest house in New Hampshire are just plain crazy. Or maybe not so crazy. That is up for you to discern, dear listener. Maybe there are other words for shadow flyers. I can think of a few. But what we call them is not as important as what they are and how they affect us. As 2023 gains momentum, I am starving the flyers and letting the light shine. The zombie nation is not a place. It's a state of mind. It's a discipline to discern. It's discipline to know what is healthy and what is poison. There are poisoned candy apples all around tempting on the daily. The shadow flyers want you to be weak. They want you to bite that sweet poison apple. It's right here and so easy to do. Everybody does it, right? The shadow flyers are watching. The Shadow Flyers need human misery for their survival. The Shadow Flyers are spiritual parasites, and when you try to level up, they will come for you. They will reveal themselves when you try to conserve your light for your life and your life journey. They want your energy. They love to use a combination of enticement and guilt behind a deceitful veil that eases the discomfort of the poor choices that they encourage you to make. 
Maybe you are already aware. I hope you are. But if not, here's a warning. You must be strong to survive the blitz if you ever wish to level up. They are watching you and will launch a directed spiritual attack customized just for you when you try to level up, when you transcend addictions, transcend allowing yourself to be attacked, and transcend wasting your life energy on distractions. Whatever your addiction is, a bottle, a pill, flesh, whatever indulgence that comforts the loneliness and unease, even if it is just complaining and procrastinating, gaining awareness and discipline of this is the gate out of the zombie nation. This is the gate out of hell and into whatever kind of heaven you wish to live in. When you try to go through the gate, you will be attacked by the blitz of the shadow flyers and the gang stalkers, agent smiths in disguise or not, trucker hitchhikers, and definitely the shadow flyers, and a lot of them, but they have nothing on you. They can only tempt you, but they cannot touch you. You are safe if you believe. If you have no fear, there is actually nothing to fear. These spiritual hustlers are just like images on a movie screen. They are real in a way, but not real at all in another way, even though you can see them, or hear them, or feel their energy and intentions. Heaven is not a place. It's a state of mind and a frequency. It is love and forgiveness and faith that good things are to come, and this means no fear. No fear ever. This is the scary story channel that says, no fear, it's all an illusion. You have more power than they could ever have. They need you for survival. And once you see them for what they are, all your energy is yours, not just to survive, but to thrive. All these years, so many are being energetically pruned and clipped and harvested. It's a personal apocalypse when you realize that they are stealing from you and all you have to do is just stop feeding them. This is revelation. 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 The revolution will not be televised and most will never know it happened. It's a personal apocalypse when you find out. And when you do, you don't talk about it as this truth will be weaponized against you. Speaking of this truth will make one ridiculed and mocked by the blind and by the dark ones. You can only discuss this secret with God and with those who know and the very select few in your inner circle that you want to help with the difficult walk, the spiritual battle, and the collapse of the ego that will occur when you walk through the gate. Most will never see the other side, but some will. And you, dear listener, are one with eyes to see are and one with eyes ears to, to hear. It's been awesome having you visit for this horrible tale. Dusk is a time of transition. It's an owl's wake-up call. As the shadows grow longer and darkness takes over, the only thing to fear is fear itself. You can also catch Smoking Owl Tales on TikTok, Instagram, as well as podcasts, including Anchor, Spotify, and Apple. We have big plans for 2023. There are several mind-blowing collaboration stories in the works right now. If you feel the call, give a rip at the subscribe button and scratch at the comments. Stay longer now or catch you on another night very soon because the story goes on and on and on and on. And on.